Buongiorno, welcome back to my channel. Today I am testing another Italian brand and today's video is all about the private collection of Prada. Now I am going to be totally honest, I even didn't know there is a private collection of Prada. But yeah, we have here 10 fragrances that we are going to go through and tell you my first impression. This is a part of a new series here on my channel, so I decided for 2023 to test one Italian brand each month. So this is episode four. I will leave link the previous episodes in the description down below as well in the eye up here. Today is just the first impression. I will upload next month a recap of this brand and also all the previous brands that I've tested and tell you what I would recommend and my final thoughts about the collection or about the brand in general. So if you want to know all about Prada private collection all factories, then please keep on watching. But before we start, if you're new to my channel, hi, welcome. My name is Nora and on this channel, I mostly talk about fragrances. So if you are a fragrance lover, then please consider subscribing and also hit the notification bell. So you will get notified when I upload any new video. I will highly, highly appreciate it if by the end of this video you found it helpful or you enjoyed it to give me a thumb up. That will help me a lot. And without further ado, let's start. So this discovery set, as I said, have 10 fragrances and it's all the ones that are available in this line, the olfactories. The ones that come in like the transparent bottles. I will leave a picture here. There is another line of their private collections that comes in more of a darker bottle. It's called Mirage, I think. I did not test these, so we are talking just about the olfactories here. They come in a dapper, which I really, really dislike. So I have already the testers laid out with the perfume because usually I always do a mess with dappers when I do a first impression. So let's start with the first one and it is Cargo de Nuit. And this is to me definitely a f like a men fragrance. It's kind of a very fresh, clean, put together everyday scent for men is there is something almost smoky dusty in it and i smell vetiver maybe some florals i can't tell you which but it's just a very nice everyday elegant men fragrance nothing extremely special or out of the word beautiful so let's look up the notes on this one so we have coumarin which is not a surprise yes i get this Dustiness of coumarin, ambrette, cedar, Izui super. Now that I'm reading it, yes, I get also the Izui super, hidian, oris, freesia, and sandalwood. No vetiver, surprise. Yeah, I don't know why I get vetiver, but yeah, it's a nice, nice fragrance, but I wouldn't like go out of my way to buy it, if that makes any sense. Next, we have purple rain. <laughs> This is powdery iris and maybe also violet. Um, it has like this sharp edge that I smell in violet. And it's quite on the unisex side, not totally feminine. And there's almost like a bite, like something spicy, something, but just like a small, small hint of it. And it has this effortless elegance to it. So it's not a violet or iris that bothers me in a way. I like it. If you know Prada's uh, Infusion collection, I'm not saying that this is similar to Infusion d'Iris, but it has the same vibes, this airy, light, effortless elegance to it. Like a casual chic fragrance in a way, an everyday scent. If you love iris and you love violet, it's definitely more complex than uh, Amphosio de Ries. So another nice fragrance, but nothing extremely special. So let's see the notes on this one. So we have in the top Galbanum and Bergamot. We have in the mid Iris, Neroli, Hidian, Rose. And in the base, Vetiver, Violet, White Musk, Izui Super, Sandalwood and Cedar. Yeah, the, the, the Iris is coming now more strong. But yeah, this is an iris that I would wear, but not a fragrance that I would go and buy. Next is New Usule. So I'm guessing something beachy or maybe tropical. No. <laughs> 
I am now wondering if the perfumer who did these fragrances, if it's only one, but I guess yes, because there it's, they have the same vibe. It's the same that does Anfusion, so the in perfumer. I don't know if Prada has an in perfumer. I will look for all of that and include it when I do like my follow-up. No, I don't like this fragrance. Uh, it's light and elegant, but old-fashioned. It smells clean and floral. Maybe freesia. I can smell freesia. Maybe neroli. Yeah, I don't like this one much. There is something definitely vintagey about it. It's not bad, but again, not something extremely special and it still has this vibe of infusion line so let's see the notes of this one no surprise we have in the top aldehydes i didn't smell aldehydes to be honest but again this is in the dry down then we have pity grain in the mid we have orange blossom not neroli freesia so i got that one right green notes magnolia and in the base white musk patchouli and amberwood so it's a nice scent but not something that i would consider part of a private collection if that makes any sense so that was new au soleil next is marine bat hmm, now we are getting into something a little bit you know that is a little bit different let's say this is more of an ambery fragrance, a lot of tolu balsam here, a little bit smoky, it's woody but has a sweetness to it. This is a nice fragrance that is a little bit niche like, but it does have an alimalic touch. I like this one. For now, not something that I am blown away by it, but it's nice. It's nice. It reminds me of a memo fragrance though. So just can't put my finger which one. So let's look up the notes. We have in the top bergamot, in the mid rose and plum. And in the base we have amber, leather, incense, vanilla, civet, oud, really. I don't get much of oud, I get a lot of tall balsam. Labdanum, yes, 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 labdanum also. Ars tolu balsam, yes, and patchouli. So I guess the sweetness comes from plum and the more I am smelling it, the more I like it. So quite promising this one. I will look up on Fragrantica if they compare it to any memo fragrance because I'm a little bit curious. So it seems there is no one who is comparing this one to any memo fragrance. If I smelled this one on someone, I would have guessed it's a memo fragrance. So that was Marimbat. Next is a day for night. Lovely name. And I think I have to reapply this one because I can't get it. Let's see if I can get it now. Hmm, interesting. This to me is a soft oriental. It has this embry vanilla thing, but very soft and light. There is something sweet and also almost something dark like a strong note but it's done in a way that I can't distinguish what it is I like this one this is interesting this is very interesting scent it's not like I love it but it has something I feel like it's one of these fragrances that when you test them on your skin again and again and again you will fall in love with them so let's see the notes we have amber Caramel, that explains a lot. Benzoin, elemi, leather, vanilla, leather, okay. Vanilla, tonka bean, incense, pepper, and cedar. It's maybe the combination of leather with, I don't know, the incense that gives me this strong, sharp note in the background. I don't know. This fragrance is really intriguing me. So I will test it actually now on my skin and tell you at the end of the video what I think. Next, we have Achant d'Amour. Oh my God, what a name. Like a love song, maybe. <laughs> this is quite a generic floral fragrance. Lovely name, but I feel like the scent doesn't live up to the name. Definitely elegant, I will give it that. It has some powderiness, maybe some iris. 
but not much, musky, and there is something quite unique about it, I have to say, but it's still generic. There is a touch of uniqueness in it, but not enough to make it like a special fragrance. So overall, this is like a powdery, elegant floral fragrance. So we have in the top neroli and bergamot, and in the mid, cotton, flower, orange blossom, jasmine, and lily of the valley. Hmm. Yeah, orange blossom, yes. I don't know how cotton flower smells like, to be honest, and the rest, not much. Musk, and in the base we have musk and benzoin. The muskiness I definitely can get, but I don't understand where the powderiness is coming from. Yeah, I'm a little bit disappointed also because of the name. I expected something, you know, maybe, yes, floral, but a little bit sweet, something a little bit sexy or maybe mysterious, but no, just generic. Let's get to the next one, which has also an interesting name, Pink Flamingo. Mm. Yeah, the name is quite fitting. This is a very pink fragrance. It's a fruity floral with a lot of berries. I smell raspberry for sure. It's nice. And a little bit of a powderiness. Maybe there is heliotrope here. Again, a touch of powderiness. So it's this powdery, fruity, floral, sweet fragrance, but not too much. So all the fragrances actually are quite elegant. And even this being a fruity floral, it has an elegance to it. Definitely. I actually like this one. <laughs> it put a smile on my face. It's a quite a happy, girly fragrance. Very different to the others. I wonder if it has a different perfumer. But I guess, yes, it has the signature airiness in it. It's almost bubblegummy, which usually I don't like, but it's this elegance, powderiness in it that makes it for me quite unique. Not unique, but that makes it for me tolerable and that makes it so lovely to my nose. So let's see the notes. So we have in the top bergamot, lime and lemon. In the mid, we have cherries. I would say raspberry, but it's cherries. Anyway, iris, then a flower that I cannot pronounce. It's hamanasu or Japanese rose. Raspberry, rose, hidden, peach, black currant. And in the base, we have violet, white musk, isui super, and vanilla. So I guess there is no heliotrope, it's the iris. But I could swear there is this almost almondy feeling that heliotrope gives me. Yeah, it's mostly to me cherry, raspberry, like red berries mixed with iris and a musky base, musky vanilla base. It's nice. This one I actually really, really like. Next, we have a tainted love. No. Oh. Mm. <laughs> no. Uh, oh my god, this is very vintagey like. Like, imagine a pink flamenco but made in another era. So, very vintagey, very violety. A lot, a lot of violet, but it has a sweetness in it. Oh, I just don't like this one. I just don't like this one at all. So let's see the notes. In the top we have pear, I didn't smell it. We have in the mid violet, yes, overdose of violet, rose, raspberry and peach. And in the base we have ours and musk. So somehow I was right. It's like a vintage version of pink flamenco. Too much violet, too much ours for my liking. And it's also not something, again, very unique. I mean, if you love vintage-like fragrances, go for the, you know, the OG. <laughs> uh, this is not very, very special. Next, we have Heat Wave. So I guess would be like a fresh citrus. Not. This is Ylang Ylang. A lot of Ylang Ylang. <laughs> but mixed with some white florals, I guess jasmine, and almost a and it has almost a green touch. There is some strange note here. Can't say what it is. Very, very strange. It's almost like your typical tropical fragrance, but made in Prada style. So imagine Amphosion collection. You see these very light, airy fragrances. Imagine Prada coming out with a tropical fragrance, but with that effect. This is how this fragrance smells. 
hope I'm making sense here. It lacks frangipani in my opinion, but again, every tropical fragrance has frangipani. Uh, so I can't say that it's totally genetic. There is a twist in this one. And now I am getting a lot of vanilla also, and it's not cloying. This is what I like about it. Is it something that I would buy? <laughs> no. But I'm not like as big as fan of Ylang Ylang anyway. It's one of the fragrances that I would recommend, but personally not buy. So let's see the notes on this one. So we have in the top Artemisia and Lemon, and in the mid Jasmine, Ylang Ylang. Oh, night blooming serious serious i talked about that flower in my life and fragrances video i will leave it linked down below and also in the eye where i talked about my journey in like the fragrance world and i talked about this note in particular because this is a flower that is connected to so many many memories it's quite a unique flower and it does not smell like this <laughs> at all there is a hint however i get something but it's not it it's not that flower that is just out of this world beautiful anyway in the base we have coconut vanilla and benzoin not a surprise it's yes it's like you took terracotta from Guerlain and you made it light and airy like the Amphosio line so I really like it but not my favorite tropical fragrance ah our last one we already finished we have double dare next time i will always do like prepare the testers it's it saves a lot of time this is quite masculine unisex leaning masculine tall balsam smell it quite potent but it's more on the fresh side than on the ambery side yeah it's a mix of fresh citry fragrance and um, tolu balsam, balsamic, spicy fragrance. And it's mixed in a way that I actually really like. What I like about all these fragrances is how they are blended. It's very elegant. It's an elegant, leather, balsamic, citrusy, spicy fragrance. <laughs> now it's becoming more and more masculine not unisex anymore. I would say this is suede tulu balsam bergamot fragrance with some peppery touch. That one is a win, but again, it's not like extremely unique. So let's get to my ranking and my final thoughts on olfactories from Prada. On number 10, not surprised, Tainted Love. You saw my reaction. Too vintagey and not even special, so it doesn't check any of the boxes for me. This is to me not a recommended fragrance from the line. Next, on number nine, we have Cargo de Nuit. This is not bad. It's just too generic and too designer to be included in like a private collection. So it's a nice scent, but not worth it. So Cargo de Nuit on number nine. Number eight, I will go with Pepper Rain again not very special and yeah it seems also very very light light that i almost can't smell it now yeah not special enough from so again not something that i would recommend on number eight i would go with purple rain nice but not special yeah it's okay let's put it like that number six i will go with uh, Ashan d'amour it's just nothing special. Again, just okay. Nice scent, but nothing extraordinary. And I am looking, when I see a private collection, I am looking for something very special. Now, the rest, I would say, are fragrances that I would recommend, but I still have to test them on my skin and see, uh, and see about performance, etc. So... I will go on number five with Heat Wave. It's a tropical fragrance that I personally would wear and it is a little bit different enough, you know, and it's not like extremely typical tropical fragrance. I will go on number four with Double Dare, although it's 
really nice. And I would say it's almost like heat wave. Like it is a very, very good fragrance to my nose, but not extremely special. So I am putting it on number four. Next three are very, very promising to me. So on number three, I will go with Pink Flamenco. It's just this happy fragrance. It's just this bubblegummy happiness to me. It smells really nice, but with a touch of elegance. <sighs> now I am going to go on number two with Marine Bat. So good if you love ambery balsamic fragrances this is so so good now on number one my favorite one is day for night guys this is a gourmand that i can wear it's sweet but yet a little bit airy it's elegant i don't know about you but i do not associate elegance with gourmands I can associate gourmands with sexiness, with flirtatious, everything, but not elegance. This is an elegant gourmand, and I don't know how they did it, but it is. The caramel is very light, very airy, and I really, really like it. I have it on my skin, and... It's not overpowering, but again, I have to test it more and more and see how performance will go on this one. But for now, this is my favorite one. Day for night for someone who is looking for an elegant gourmand. Now, it may seem that I don't like this collection. Actually, I do. And there is only one fragrance that was like a definite no for me. I would say this is for me overall as a collection an okay collection. So we have some really good fragrances and the rest is just, just generic designer-esque fragrances. But with all of them, I have to mention, I really like the way they are blended. They have this airy, elegant, sophistication about them which i did not expect from prada to be honest i yeah i am not a fan of prada like a designer house when it comes to clothes in general but i definitely am liking this collection by the way i do like also uh, the infusion collection from prada it's just for me a little bit overpriced like it's the price tag that <laughs> i don't like about that collection but i really enjoy it and i also love la femme that line for me is everything you know how much i love it i have all the fragrances in this line this is how much i absolutely love it so overall i would say my problem with this collection would fall under the same category as my problem with the infusion line it's just too much money for what it is except the three like so number one number two and number three that i've mentioned they look very very promising again stay tuned for my follow-up for prada and trussardi and giardini di toscana all the brands that i've talked about till now and definitely stay tuned for more brands next I have a very exciting brand, niche brand, next month. So definitely don't forget to subscribe and to hit the notification bell. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please don't forget to give me a thumb up and tell me in the comments down below what do you think about this line? Did you try it? Do you have a favorite? And what do you think about Prada in general, like fragrances from Prada in general? Always love to see your comments down below. Thanks a lot for watching and see you next time. Ciao.